Hey, what's up, family? Uh, I'm Pastor Stephen Herrick, uh, pastor here at the Bethel Baptist Church East, and I am excited about worship today. And I am also excited about what God is doing through this church. Uh, we are in year 100, and we are going to celebrate with one another like never before. We are going to celebrate God like never before. We are going to work like never before, and we are going to worship um, like never before. So as we um, prepare for worship um, this morning, um, get your copy of God's Word. Um, gather your family together. Um, think of somebody who you can quickly invite um, and put on your garment of praise. Amen. Get that garment of praise on and let's worship God together in song, in word, and in giving. As you can see, um, the physical sanctuary is empty, but the online sanctuary is full. Amen. Let's praise God together. Let's worship together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I read to you in Title 23 Psalm. Good morning, Bethelese. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are glad to be a part of it. As we come today together to worship God in spirit and in truth, let us all bow our heads as we thank God for this day. Most holy, righteous God, our Father, and our Savior, Lord Jesus, we come this morning with, with hearts filled of thanks. We thank you for being a part of this day. We thank you for last night's rest and sleep. We thank you for watching over and caring for us throughout our lives up until this present moment. Lord, this is the day that you've made, and this is the th things that we have never seen or been a part of, but you know all about it. So we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you look beyond all our faults and you continue to share and, and give us our needs. We praise you, Lord. Now, as we come forth to listen to your word, we pray, Lord, that we would open up our ears and open up our hearts and receive your word and then be, do, be doers of the word, not just hearing, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for your love and your mercy. Continue to watch over us this church and other churches open in your name. Bless the world at large. Bless our families. And we thank you for your love and your mercy and your care. In Jesus' name, amen. I can hear my mama pray. I still hear mama pray. I can hear pray. And she knew 
and self-favorite friend. <laughs> she knew how to call on the name of Jesus. Cause she knew that he'd be there. <laughs> she would thank him <laughs> for giving her health and strength. Just to run, to run this Christian race. But she never, she never failed to pray for her children. She said, Lord, save them by your grace. Hey, oh, I can hear, I can hear my mama pray. Now the one that you call mom, she may be sleeping, Lord, in the arms of her God. But the memory, the memory, the family emotion causes us to always trust in our God. But she never, no, she never, never failed to pray. Cause she knew, Lord, she knew. She said, Lord, will you save them? She said, will you save my children? And Lord, let the Lord of God on by. Yes, you will. Lord, she said, I still hear Mama praying. I still hear my Mama praying. Lord, the prayer that you pray, keeping me day by day. I can hear my mama praying. <laughs> Someday it's early in the morning. <laughs> Sometimes I can hear my mama praying late at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mama start praying. She said, Our Father, we child in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Oh Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, talking about my, my mama. My mama prayed for me.
alongside me, Mama. Mama, and hold my little hand. I have so many things to learn that I don't yet understand. Teach me things to keep me safe from the dangers every day. Show me how to do my best at home, at school, at play. Every child needs a gentle hand to guide them as they grow. So walk alongside me, Mama. We have a long way to go.
Y'all come on and help us praise him. Come on, after all God has brought you through, he is worthy of your praise. And this is just a reminder, look, God has blessed you here. And he's blessing you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to share God's word with you on today. Um, as I stated last week, um, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I pray that the series of messages or well, the message that came last week um, and the messages that continue to come during this month will be a blessing to your life. Um, today, um, we are going to talk about anxiety. We're going to talk about anxiety. Um, and the Lord has highlighted this particular passage for us to talk about that uh, so get your copy of God's word and join me in first Peter. First Peter, chapter number five, we're going to read verse six and verse seven. First Peter, chapter five, uh, verse six and verse seven. For today's message, I will be reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV. First uh, Peter, once again, chapter number five, verse six and verse seven. Eternal God, our fathers, once again, I come to you to say thank you. Father, this is the day that you have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I thank you for this preaching moment, but I highly recognize that your people did not come to hear me, but they have come to hear you. And Lord, I want to publicly confess before you and your people and all you and all that may hear that I have studied your word, labored in your word and meditated and prayed over your word. But Lord, I can go no further. So I pray that you would decrease me right now in the name of Jesus. And increase your Holy Spirit within me. I'm praying that your people will see Jesus and not Stephen, oh God. And that you will be glorified through this message. And your will and work will be done through this word. Praying that just like the prophet Jeremiah in humble submission, I ask that you will put your words in my mouth. That I will declare what thus saith the Lord. And I will not speak what I want to say, but I will only speak what you want me to say. And now, Lord, I'm praying that you will open up our eyes so that we will see Open up our ears so that we will hear. Open up our minds so that we will receive. And open up our hearts so that we will change. And I pray that if for any reason Satan may have set up any plans, plots, or scheme to come in between or block this word. Lord, I pray that you will rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus. And we hold fast to your word and reminder that your word will go out and, set and do everything that it has set out to do and not return back void. And finally, Lord, I'm praying that through this word, souls will be saved and disciples will be made. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So First Peter chapter number five, verse six and verse seven uh, reads like this. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Amen. The word of God is blessed. I pray that he blesses the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Uh, for today's message, I want to use for a subject the antidote for anxiety. The antidote for anxiety. Ladies and gentlemen, anxiety is defined as a feeling of worry, 
nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. And though all of us have things in life that we are uncertain about, anxiety is not something that we should live with. And for the believer, anxiety is not something that we have to live with. Um, there is a way for us as believers to live in uncertainty, yet without anxiety. And the most powerful vaccination against anxiety is found here in 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse 6 and verse 7. These two verses gives us the antidote for anxiety. Here it is. The antidote uh, to anxiety, excuse me, the antidote for anxiety is to humble yourselves before God by transferring your burdens from you to him. That's my whole sermon. But here, let me break it down for you. Um, in order to humble yourselves before God by transferring your burdens from you to him, you must first. Empty yourselves of pride. Yeah, you must first empty yourself of pride. So in order to humble yourself before God by transferring your burdens from you to him, you must first empty yourself of pride. The text says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. So that at the proper time, he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, consider this grammatical notes that we will properly understand this passage. In the original Greek, verse 6 and verse 7 is one sentence and should be taken as one command. Um, and the King James Version and English Standard Version gets it right. Um, furthermore, verse 7, casting your anxieties upon him because he cares for you, is a subordinate clause to verse 6, which points to the truth that casting your anxiety on him because he cares for you is connected to humbling yourselves before God. Now, the question is, what does humbling yourselves before God have to do with casting your anxieties upon him? That's a great question. Here it is. Humbling yourselves before God is the action of one that has truly cast their anxieties on God rather than holding it on to it themselves. Uh, catch this. Come here a little closer. Catch this. One of the reasons why we struggle with anxiety is because of pride. Oh, Lord, help me. Pride is a leading cause for anxiety because pride says I can handle it all by myself. Pride says even though my fears are unmanageable, I can deal with it. Pride says I do not need any help. Pride causes you to lie to yourself and say nothing is wrong when something very well is wrong. Pride says no one is going to save me, so I have to save myself. Pride does not like to admit that there is someone wiser and stronger to carry your burdens. Pride requires you to handle your burdens all by yourself. Pride, it, it keeps us from entrusting God with the things that we are uncertain about. And some of our anxiety is caused because we have not emptied ourselves of pride. And to empty yourself of pride, um, in order to do that, you must acknowledge that you are weak. In order for us to um, 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 empty ourselves of pride, we must acknowledge that we are weak and yield to God's help to take that burden off of us through prayer. Now hear this, get this. You cannot be prideful and prayerful at the same time. 
Lord Jesus, you you cannot be prideful and prayerful at the same time. Pride keeps you in a place that is self-reliant while prayer puts you in a place where you are God reliant. That's why somebody who truly gives their burdens to God are humble, because if you are prideful, then there is still a part of you that believes you can do it by yourself. Stay with me here. Get this. It is counterproductive, yet very possible for you to give your anxiety to God with your lips and still carry it in your heart. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Can Can I be honest right here? Can I be honest right in here? Um, um, A lot of people pray. A lot of us pray. And even after prayer, um, um, you still live with anxiety because your pride coexists with your prayers. Uh, So after you pray, you give it to God with your lips, but you're still carrying the burdens in your heart. But ladies and gentlemen, while pride should not coexist with your prayers, humbleness should coexist with your prayers. Humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God is the realization that your hands are weak, but his hands are mighty. It is being honest with yourself that some of your fears are unmanageable and must be managed by something and someone that's wiser and greater than you. It is being honest that you do need help and cannot do it on your own. It is realizing that you cannot save yourself. It is living in uncertainty but not pressuring yourself to make sense of the uncertain. It is the end of self-reliance and the beginning of God reliance. It closes the door on self and opens the door for God. I'm talking about humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. It moves self out of the way so that God can get in the way. And since self and God can both cannot both be your savior, one of them has to go. And this sermon is your call to stop trying to save yourself. And rather turn, turn to God for help. Stop trying to save yourself, but turn, turn to God for help. So in order to humble yourself before God by um, transferring your burdens from you to him, you must first um, empty yourself of pride. And you do that. By number one, we just talked about it, acknowledging that you are weak. And number two, turning to God for help. Now, the second thing that you must do in order to humble yourself before God by transferring your burdens from you to him is rest in God's care. Rest in God's care. We're going to explain it now. Um, Verse seven says, um, casting your cares, excuse me, casting your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Uh, Once again, um, this verse is a subordinate clause to verse six, and it gives the way for you to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In other words, You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God by casting your cares upon him. Um, Now, now get this. um, That word casting in the Greek is is, um, epiriphantes. And and it means to transfer one's anxieties. It it means to transfer one's concerns. It, It means to propel something from one place to another. Here it is. Come here. Come back here. Um, um, you, um, um, you casting your anxiety on him is transferring your worries from you to God. Right. The goal is for you to get it off of you and to put it on him. That means um, that the situation um, that, that has you ex- anxious, the, the situation that is keeping you up at night, the situation that you cannot get on your mind, the situation that takes up um, a great portion of your mental space, mental capacity and mental thoughts in every single day is a burden that should be transferred over to God where it belongs. Free yourself. Free yourself. 
from the pressure to manage things that God offers to manage for you. Good God Almighty, I'm preaching good. I'm going to say it again for myself. Free yourself from the pressure to manage things that God has offered to manage for you. <laughs> I'm going to shout all by myself in this empty sanctuary. Here it is. You should not be carrying your worries. You should be casting your worries. You should not be carrying your worries. You should not be carrying your anxieties. You should be casting your worries. You should be casting your anxieties. And as long as your worries and anxieties remain on you, they will continue to weigh you down. But the hymnologist says it so well. Hymnologist, as a matter of fact, said it best. Take your burdens and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it. Leave it there. I'm done. Uh, um, but, 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 but you might ask. You might have one question. I thought about this question that you were asking while I was preaching. Here it is. You might ask, why should I transfer my worries to him? <laughs> why should I transfer my anxieties from myself over to God? I'm glad you asked because the answer is right there in verse 7b. Um, um, you should transfer your anxieties over to God. Because he cares for you. Because he cares for you. Um, that is your confirmation that it is safe to let go and let God. That, that is your confirmation that it is safe to release it to God in prayer. That is your confirmation that it is safe to put your fears back in their place and choose to have faith about the uncertain. That, uh, that, that is your confirmation that it is safe to take your hands off of it and trust God's hands with it because God cares for you. God can be trusted with your worries. God is a burden bearer. And the way to rest in God's care. This is how you rest in God's care. And I'm done. Uh, um, the way to rest in God's care. Is to express the things. That are bringing you to anxiety to him in prayer. Express the things that you are anxious about to him in prayer. Express the things that you are worried about to him in prayer. And trust that since he cares for you, he will work out everything for you according to his um, perfect will. Um, that is the antidote for anxiety. We don't have to worry because we serve a God that cares. We don't have to try and work it out because we trust that God is going to work it out for us. We don't have to live life weighed down by anxiety. To live life weighed down by anxiety indicates that you don't quite trust God um, with your situation. It, it indicates that you don't quite trust God to really handle it yet and you are still trying to find a way to carry it yourself. It indicates that you are not yet resting in his care. But I got another songwriter for you. Um, I like how the songwriter um, says, I couldn't seem to fall asleep. <laughs> There was so much on my mind searching for that peace, but that peace that I could not find. So then I knelt down to pray, praying, Lord, help me, please. Then he says, you don't have to cry because I'll supply all of your needs. Here it is. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and let God, let God have his way. Friends, being free of anxiety is not obtained by our own resolutions or saying to ourselves that I have to be strong enough for this. But it is obtained by um, casting it on a caring God in our weakness and helplessness through prayer and leaving it on him to handle it for us. Um, and I have to say this, um, prayer is not only your expressed trust in God. 
but it is your active trust in God. See, don't allow pride to creep in your life after you pray, causing you to carry the burden that you just cast on God. See, pride requires your work, but casting your cares upon him positions you to rest in his work. Pride will keep you weighed down, but humbling yourself and casting your humbling yourself by casting your cares upon him will lift the weight off of you and put it onto God where is where it belongs. Um, it is not good. Um, it is not good for your mental health to carry anxiety. But it is good for your mental health to transfer those things that are weighing you down to the Lord. Knowing that he cares for you and he will handle your situation with care. Psalms 55 and 22 says it like this. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. I'm done, but consider this last thought. The same humble humbleness that is needed to truly cast your cares upon him, resting in the fact that God cares for you, is the same humbleness needed for salvation. If you have not emptied yourself of pride, then you will not see your need for a savior and you will become a God to yourself. When you humble yourself before God, recognizing that you are a sinner in need of salvation, God will be right there to take that sin burden from you and he will give you his righteousness. Free yourself, please, please free yourself from the pressure to be your own savior. I'm going to say that again. Free yourself from the pressure to be your own savior. Jesus will manage that for you. Jesus Christ has carried the burden of sin once and for all at the cross and he will carry everything um, that you bring to him, everything that you give to him. And given that Jesus has already carried your burdens to the cross, why carry something that Jesus has already offered to carry for you? So give your burdens to Jesus. Give your sins to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Give your worries to Jesus. Give your anxieties to Jesus. And he will save you and give you rest. Let's pray. Eternal God, our fathers, once again, that we come to you to say thank you. Father, I hear your word saying, come unto me all that are heavy laden and burdened. And you will give us rest. Father, I'm thanking you, O oh God, that we do not have to live with anxiety. We do not have to carry anxiety and be weighed down by the worries of life. Lord, you have offered to carry our burdens for us. I thank you that you are a burden bearer, oh God. You have already um, borne our, our, our burden. You have already borne our um, burden of sin, oh God. And even now in the present, oh God, I know that you will bear our anxieties. You will bear all of our burdens and anything that we truly offer to you in prayer and humble submission before you. Lord, I know that you will take that burden. You will relieve us of anxiety and you will give us peace. Father, my prayer is for those who have heard your word, oh God. I pray that if they are prideful, oh God, you will humble them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will bring their heart to repentance in such a way that they will humble themselves before you and recognize that even though they are weak, oh God, you are strong. And matter of fact, oh God, you set things in such a way that we will be weak so that you can prove yourself strong, oh God. So I'm praying, oh God, that instead of being a God to ourselves and trying to carry our burdens, carry our loads and handle everything that comes along with life, I'm praying that we will humbly submit to you. We will spend time in prayer and, and spend time releasing those things to you, knowing that you will take them and you will give us rest. Father, I thank you that you are a God that cares for us and has our best interests at heart. Now, Lord, I'm praying and if somebody heard this word and are not saved and in the safety of your hands, I pray that they will accept you as their personal savior. Lord, I'm praying for all of those who are in you, who are believers. Oh God, I pray that this word will strengthen them and do everything that you have set out for them to do. 
Uh, bless us to not be only hearers of your word, but also doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, listen, if you are in that online sanctuary and you are not connected to Christ or not connected to church, we want to help you to take those next steps. We have our virtual arms wide open, inviting you to come into God's family and be a part of this community of faith. Um, there's two ways that you can connect with us. Um, in the comment section of this video, you should um, see a form that you can fill out to connect with this church and even information is on how you can connect to Christ. Christ. And guess what? The good news is you don't have to come to the physical sanctuary um, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But if you are at that place where you are, um, um, you acknowledge your need for a Savior, you have humbled yourself before God and want God to take that burden of sin off you and be your Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says it like this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Amen. So if you believe that, if you confess that, and if it is in your heart, guess what? You are saved wherever you are. And we praise God for all that he has done all that he is doing right now and all that he is going to do in the future amen blessed be blessed be the lane best blessed be the name of the lord amen it's giving time now it's time that we worship the lord in giving um and as i say every sunday second um, corinthians 9 and 7 reminds us that the lord loves a cheerful giver the lord loves a cheerful giver um but join me real quick as i whisper a word of prayer to pray the lord's blessings over these offerings that have come and that are to come eternal god our fathers once again we come to you say thank you Father, we are able to give because you have first given to us. So, Lord, as we come to return a portion of what you have given to us, I pray that you will bless this offering, bless those who will give, and even bless those who will not give. I pray a blessing over everyone who hears um, the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I, mean, I do want to remind you of the multiple ways in which you can give during this time through this online platform. Um, number one, you can give electronically via Givelify. Amen. You have to down. If you have any electronic or mobile device, um, you can download the app Givelify. Search Bethel Baptist Church East, and then continue to follow the prompts, and you'll be able to give electronically via Givelify. Um, another way, um, you could have dropped off your contributions this morning, Sunday mornings, eight thirty to nine thirty, and also um, at the conclusion of our worship service. From 1130 to 1230. Amen. And also um, the other method is you can mail in your contribution. You can mail in your contribution by mailing to our church address. Um, Bethel Baptist Church East 5715 Holcomb, uh, Detroit, City State, Detroit, Michigan, zip code 48213. And uh, the final final method that we have made available is pick up by request. So if you would like us to um, pick up your contribution, your tithe, your offering, um, please call the church office 313-923-3060. And um, Dr. Whitsett will be happy to help you lead you and connect us with you so that we can pick up your contribution. Do want to also remind you, don't forget about the community outreach line item that has now included. Um, as you know, and as I have said, we are in the season where we are increasing our reach. So that means we have to increase our giving. And do want to let you know that as a result of our outreach, two more people have connected with Christ and our church as a result of God's work through us. Amen. So this is definitely something that we need to continue to do, continue to support and continue continue to push as we um, continue to be God's uh, hands, his voice, and his feet in the earth to the glory, to the glory of his name. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, giving is worship. And aside from um, your worship to God, we do want to thank you for channeling your worship through our church family. Amen. Now I have a couple of announcements. First of all, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Special shout out to Deborah Herod. I know you're out there listening. I love you so much and I thank you uh, for giving birth to me. Nevertheless, to all the mothers out there, you are appreciated. We certainly thank God for you. We would not be here without our mothers. So on this day and beyond, we certainly want to salute and appreciate Appreciate all of the mothers and we also um, praise God and also memorialize the mothers who have already gone on to be with the Lord. Amen. We certainly 
keep you all in our prayers during this time as we not only celebrate, but also memorialize those, remember, remember, excuse me, remember those uh, mothers who have already went on to be with the Lord. On that note, also of appreciation, um, this past week was Nurses Appreciation Week, I believe, um, Teachers Appreciation Week. And also, um, we're going to add in administration because we have some administrators here in this church as well, principals and all of that. So, hey, amen. I just want to let you know that we appreciate you. We thank you and we salute all of you as well. Hey, amen. I, I can only imagine how um, laborious you have been during this time, your work during this time, your efforts during this time and all that you have had to do during this time. So you are certainly in our prayers and we certainly thank God for you. So to all our nurses, teachers, administrators. Administrators and all of those um, who are at work, we appreciate you, we salute you, and we are praying for you during this time. Amen. I do want to remind you um, that now it's um, reoccurring every Friday from 12 to 3. We will uh, be doing our food distributions. We will be um, setting up and um, um, pre um, in, in the action of preparation um, from about 9 to 1130 and then distribution from 12 to 3. And already in just three weeks, of outreach and three weeks of doing God's work outside of the four walls. Amen. Six people, six people already have already connected with Christ and this church family. So we thank God for them. We welcome them into our family. We will uh, release their names as we continue to do our data entry and get more information. But praise be unto God. Amen. Our um, spiritual goal, if you do not remember, in our 100th anniversary, this is our 100th anniversary. Amen. Praise God for that. And we're still going to celebrate Amen. Don't think we're not going to celebrate. We still are going to celebrate what God has done, what he is doing right now and what he is going to do in the future. But guess what? We have all the more reason to celebrate now for the six souls in the past three weeks. So that means we are six souls more closer or six souls, six souls closer um, to our goal of 100 and beyond. Amen. I'm believing that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So it's our job to continue to work, continue to be his hands, continue to be his voice, continue to be his feet in the earth and let God take care of the rest. Amen. So let's continue. Let's continue to do our work in the name of Jesus. Um, do also want to let you know, as I do every week, um, check your emails for continued updates, Facebook and YouTube, um, on the online platforms that we are using. If you have not updated your email with our church please call the church office 313-923-3060 um, because that information, um, it was because vital information, good information gets put out every week and we would love for you to be informed and a part of that. Um, finally, I do want to remind you and I'll make sure email will be sent out that um, soon we're going to start a Bible study series entitled Dear God, I Have Some Questions for You. Amen. So if you have any questions for God about yourself, any questions about the Bible or some topics in the Bible or anything related, we have created a form for you to submit those questions and prayerfully myself and the ministerial staff are going to answer those, study those questions, answer those questions and present them during our Bible study hour. So please, please do submit your questions and any questions that you may have through the form that will come via email this week. And also, finally, those who are uh, mailing in your contributions do want to let you know they have arrived safely and you should begin acknowledgement of receipt as they come in. And finally, listen, I want to pray with you. Uh, I want to go to God to prayer, go to God in prayer with you right now in the name of Jesus. So I pray that you will um, drop down your um, prayer request in the comment section and also call out their name. Amen. Even though I may not be able to hear their name, God does hear their name and he will not only hear, but incline his ear to us and answer our cries. I do want to just mention a couple of names that we are in continued prayers for. Um, Wanda Harrison, um, Reverend Gary Montgomery, uh, Janet McAlpin, uh, Mother Emma Owens, uh, Minister Douglas and her husband, Brother Joe Hill, and Sister Billie Jean Johnson. And if I fail to mention your name, please charge it to my head. 
and um, not in my heart. Do want to pray for the Wesley family. She has suffered a loss in her family, so we do want to keep her in our thoughts and in our prayers during this time. Um, but praise be unto God that in some of the names and most of the names, if not all of the names that I just mentioned, have all sent in praise reports. Amen. It is such a blessing to see how God is working in this pandemic. God is still healing. God is still delivering. God is still saving. God is still doing so many great things. So we have to keep praying, keep fighting, and keep working in the name of Jesus, knowing that God is going to work everything out for our good. So keep the faith and keep on praying, knowing that God will and God does answer all of our prayers. Amen. So if there's nothing else, um, let us go to God in prayer. Let us uh, release our burdens to him. Let us release our anxieties and our worries to him and leave them there. There's a quote that says, if you go to God in prayer and you lay down your burdens, but um, come back and take your burdens with you, then you didn't even pray. Amen. So this is our space to pray to God, to release our burdens to him and leave them there, knowing that he will work them out and knowing that they are better in his hands than in our hands. Eternal God, our Father, so once again, we come to you to say thank you, Father. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this Mother's Day, oh God. We thank you for all of the mothers um, that are alive and even those who have went on to be with you, oh God. And I want to uh, right there say a special prayer for those who have lost their mothers, oh God. I know that this day um, is potentially a hard day for them, a, a trying day for them, and a day that may be filled with memories and tears, oh God. So I'm praying that you will comfort them in the name of Jesus. Touch them and uplift them right now in Jesus' name, oh God. Not only that, oh God, but we thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, you are a great God, oh God. We know that you care for us and that you will see us through what we are going through. Father, we thank you for blessing us in this pandemic. You have sustained us in this pandemic. You have provided for us in this pandemic. You, has, you have healed us in this pandemic. You have brought us closer to you in this pandemic. You have continued your work in this pandemic. And Lord, we thank you, oh God, because this pandemic has not stopped you from being God. This pandemic has not stopped your work and all that you have set out to do. And ultimately, oh God, you can use even a pandemic for your good, oh God. So we are comforted in the fact that we are in your hands and that we serve a God who has all power in his hands. Lord, we thank you for Jesus the Christ, Lord God, the one who saved us, the one who sacrificed his life so that we can be free and so that we can be at rest, oh God. I'm praying right now that you will forgive us for our sins. We confess our sins before you and pray that you will forgive us and bring us back into fellowship with you, oh God. We know that nothing can separate us from your love, oh God, but I'm praying right now that we will draw nearer to you even in times like these, oh God. I'm praying that we will turn our hearts away from our sins, for sinful habits and anything that is not like you and turn back to you, oh God. I pray right now that, that any burdens that we have on our heart, Lord, somebody who hear my voice and are joining in agreement with me in this prayer have burdens on their heart, burdens on their mind, anxieties that are filling them on the inside. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will release it from themselves right now in Jesus' name. We lay down our burdens before you. We lay down our concerns before you. We lay down our worries before you. We lay down that issue, that situation or whatever it is. We lay it down before you know Knowing that it is better in your hands than our hands, knowing that you are going to work it out for our on our behalf, knowing that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. So we give it over to you right now in the name of Jesus. We take it out of our hands right now in the name of Jesus. We put it into your hands. We cast it from us unto you right now in Jesus name. Oh God, I'm praying 
for Wanda Harrison, her continued um, um, recovery, her continued progress, her continued healing right now in Jesus' name. Janet McCalvin, praying for her continued recovery and strength, praying for Joe Hill, Reverend Montgomery, Mother Owens, and so many others, praying for the Wesley family. I'm praying that you will comfort them right now in the name of Jesus. And all of those who lift up prayer requests, who lift up names, we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't have to dispatch you to the hospitals, Lord, for you're already there. You're already in our home. So we're just praying that you will heal right now in the name of Jesus and deliver right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying for every nurse, every teacher, every administrator, every principal, and all of those right now in Jesus' name. Lord knows that their work is harder than ever having to work from home or work from wherever they are. I pray right now that you will strengthen them, oh God, release them of their anxieties right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying for every student, oh God, who has to uh, do education from home, oh God. I pray that, that when it's time for them to go back to school physically, if there's ever time where they will go back to school physically, I pray that you will allow them to make up for all the time that they have missed so that they will still advance and excel in their endeavors and in education. Lord, I'm praying for this community, oh God. I, I pray that you will continue to use us to reach the lost, the broken, those who are in need right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying, oh God, that you will grace us to reach over a hundred souls and beyond, oh God, bringing them to the light of Christ, bringing them to the love of Christ, and bringing them to the salvation of Christ right now in Jesus' name, oh God. I'm praying for this church, oh God, as we are in our hundred years. Bless every member, bless every disciple right now in Jesus' name. I pray that they will continue to come alive to their gifts and all that you have called them to do so that this body will continue to build up and so that your work will continue to be done in the earth right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we give all our burdens, concerns to you, and we call out all of our names and, and knowing that you will solve all of our problems and knowing that you have everything under control. And for that reason, Lord, our disposition is just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, your will be done and not our will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, family, I don't know about you, but today's worship has been a blessing to me. Um, and it is my prayer that something was said um, in the reading of scripture, um, the praying of prayers, the giving of the word. And our fellowship with one another has blessed you in one way or another. Listen, we had church. Now it's time for us to continue to be the church. So I'm praying that in this week and in the days ahead, you will continue uh, to continue to do God's work, uh, continue to share the word of Christ, the love of Christ, and bring hope to this dark world. Um, have a great week. Um, you are in my prayers. And let us pray for one another. Let us continue to fellowship with one another, um, support one another. And I'll see you this Wednesday in our online sanctuary at 6 p.m. Amen. God bless you. Hey, let me hear you say, oh, 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 let me hear you say, oh, 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 it's been a real hot couple of months you had enough. But it's been hard for everyone, you're not alone uh -uh. You've been hurting way too long Let it go and just move on Make your way down to the altar Hand it over and leave it there It's gonna be alright It's gonna be alright It's gonna be alright It's gonna be alright So everything that you've been worried about Yeah. You got all the stress and you need some peace Come on and get your breakthrough, breakthrough. I haven't you been suffering long enough Make your way down to the altar hey.